Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. My name is Judy Moody. I'm the software team manager for the Integrated Farming Solutions team here at Dairy One. We're going to be talking about transition cow management analysis. So the big part before we can even start doing analysis, we've got to talk about data recording. And that is going to be a really big piece of having good analysis is our data recording and our records. And the really big thing is consistency. So consistency and a definition of what a disease is, um, asking farmers over the years, what is an RP? And you get answers, oh, it's after 12 hours, 24, 48 hours. What does it mean when a cow has metritis? And each of these is gonna be a farm dependent answer. And that's what makes benchmarking really hard when we start looking at how does your dairy compare to the dairy next door? But being consistent on your own dairy allows you to see how you were six months ago compared to where you are today, compared to where you were a year ago. And that is gonna be in defining what a disease is and making sure everybody on the team is in, on board with that. And also making sure that we're consistent in reporting them all year long. So it's not uncommon to see a spike on farms and we say, what, what changed? So summer intern, oh, you know, kids were home from college and we had extra help. Um, you know, we had a team meeting and, and we were better about recording and we got busy because of crops. So consistency in what a disease is and consistency in doing the data entry. For those of you on the call today that don't have on-farm software, keep track of your diseases still on paper. Um, you know, if, if you're not testing, keep track of them in a notebook, share them with your consultants. If you are DHI testing, report your events to your uh, record technician, your DRSS, and the technician can enter that into their software that would get uploaded. And if you share your herd code and your rack code with your consultants, they can download your records and help with analysis and do all the reporting that we're looking at today. For those of you with on-farm software, be timely in your data entry. You know, don't think if, if I get, don't enter them today, I'll enter them next week. Well, next week comes and we don't get them in. So they need to be in timely. And uh, I would really strongly recommend using protocols when you do your entry. And we'll talk a little bit more about those later. And also entering new events. The other big thing is on data entry is no treat disease or fever events. So we're not treating a fever, not treating disease. We're not treating just a treat. We're treating a symptom of an actual event. She had a fever because she had metritis. So we need to get down to the core event that actually happened to her in order to do our data entry. The other thing um, with doing your data entry is just making sure we have access points to make it easy wherever you need to do it. So there's um, online pieces to Dairy Comp now, there's handheld options, mobile applications. We can have uh, Dairy Comp on other computers and having Dairy Comp where we need it helps with the timely and accuracy of your data, data entry. So for tracking in Dairy Comp, uh, if you don't have the events you need, Alter backslash nine gets you into the user defined events. Please, please don't change the first 18 events. They are sacred to Dairy Comp. It won't yell at you, uh, but it's a really bad idea to change them. There are some hardwired pieces to the, to the first 18 events and we cannot reuse them. We're only allowed 62 events, so farms run out of room. Uh, do you run out of room and you need help reusing? Let us know and we can help you find which ones you haven't used in a long time. It can be tricky sometimes if we reuse them too quickly for, for doing analysis. So we wanna make sure we haven't used those events in some time. After we get our events set, the next piece is that protocol. So we can access them in alter backslash seven. And again, protocols allow us consistent fast data entry. And that consistent part is what's important. So when we start pulling analysis, we can look at what kind of protocols were used for the cows, um, how often we're using them, that sort of thing. If you're not, if you don't have protocols set up in Dairy Comp now, the very first thing you're going to do is start with your vet and written protocols. Sit down as a team, make sure you're all in agreement of what the protocols are, how long the cows are going to be treated, how long the withholds are, um, and then we can start getting stuff set up in Dairy Comp. There are a bunch of background items that we need to get in, beef and milk withholds, um, previous pen, 
last treatment dates, hospital days, that sort of thing. We can help you really quickly set those up. And then once you have that one time set up, you're gonna be good to go. And we can teach you how to add your own protocols and maintain that going forward. And the big thing about protocols, so beyond the data entry, or excuse me, the data entry and the analysis is protocols also help us drive the hospital list. So hospital list will tell us she's on day three of a five day protocol for metritis. And that makes sure we get the complete treatment into the animals. So did she not respond to that metritis treatment because we didn't complete the treatment as it was written or she really didn't respond, we completed the treatment and she, she's still sick and we need to do something else. So the protocols help us with that. And then cow care, uh, we'll talk a bit more about later too, uh, but it's a permanent log of daily treatments. Let's just start tracking things more on a lifetime cow basis, uh, drug inventory. It's really making, we can erase things in dairy comp and cow care is the permanent log that we're gonna be looking for, for for some of the regulations that are coming down the road. So once we start doing all that, we're consistent in our entry, we're, we're doing it all year long, we're timely, we're using our protocols, now we can really start talking about our analysis. And there's gonna be a million things going on once you get done with this call, you're gonna get pulled away into your daily grind. And the things that you really wanna remember and write down, guide, e-graph, events, and econ. Those are the four big ones. And cow care, if you're, you've got all that stuff already going for you, we can, we can talk about cow care, but guide, e-graph, events, and econ. And we'll take a little bit of a look at those here coming up. And just, just a reminder that decisions from bad data are bad decisions. So it all drives down to, did we do good entry? Are we getting the right information in to make those decisions? And then also taking that time to understand what report the re reports are representing before we make any decisions. Did we understand the graph? Did we ask the additional questions? Did we do everything we needed before we start making management changes? So guide, that big powerhouse of dairy comp. Um, so we're not gonna be able to go through everything that we can do within guide and we can't talk about all the reports. It's just too much to go through in a short lunch meeting, um, but talking about some of the bigger concepts that we can do within the program. So looking at guide, um, common questions that farms have about their herds. And the, the complaint we hear most about dairy comp is it's hard show ID for fresh state greater than this and, and where does the backslash go as a FOR? How do, how do we write that? And guide removes all that piece that pieces that are hard in dairy comp and, and unless you use it every day, it, it is a hard task to do. So we don't need to write the commands and we can just click on the question graph and it gives us a graph guide grid, whatever we need to, to pull that information. And the other piece is very consistent. So each time you run a report within guide, it's the same, it's the same on each dairy. So when we start talking about benchmarking, we have consultants going between different sites. It's the same whether you pull it now and six months from now, you're gonna get the same answer to your question pulled in the same way out of dairy comp. So looking across the top, we have the, when we type guide, so to get into guide, type guide on the command line or in the outlook bar on the left-hand side, click on guide. It'll bring you in and across the top are the common questions, um, different management sections within a farm. So reproduction, transition, uh, production, we have SDCT, which is the uh, selective dry cow therapy that uh, we had an earlier, earlier session about. And then once you get within the management section, lots of questions. So we can talk about the individual diseases, transition with fats and protein ratios. How did we do at the dry period? How are we doing managing somatic cell going through the transition? So all we have to do is click on one of those and it'll bring us into the, to the report. So this first one I have an example of is the transition uh, cow incidence for for the metritis events indicate a recent pro uh, problem. And when we open it up, it's gonna give us the grid that is in the top left-hand corner. So a little bit busy on this slide, but just wanna show a couple of things. So 
The top left hand corner is a grid that's going to open up to. And what it shows us is that in October 20, we had 179 freshen, eight cows had metritis, which gives us a 68% confidence interval of three to 6%. And what that's saying, the 68% confidence interval is that we expect each month to be between three to 6% metritis and we'll be right 68% of the time. So when we start looking at confidence intervals, we see them more frequently in the bread sum analysis and that's at a 95% confidence interval. We have more breedings than we do fresh cow diseases. So we have more outcomes and more knowns and we can be more confident in our predictions. Um, so we would see the same small ranges, but at a 95% in, uh, confidence interval. If we were to do fresh cow diseases at a 95% confidence interval, we'd have such a large range in our numbers that it wouldn't be helpful. So what we're looking for is changes where the intervals don't overlap. So between November and December, three to 6% and then seven to 11. So we can say that something happened there where there's a significant change, right? The, the numbers aren't overlapping. We, we had a lot more metritis. And I think what this does is it raises more questions than anything, right? We can't say that we all of a sudden had a big problem. We could have, but we don't really know. So did, did we just have a team meeting beginning of December, end of November and say, hey, we've got to do better with recording. We've got to get them in there. We may have had some more help with kids off of school, college kids, interns, whatever was going on. Um, did we have more first calf heifers calving? Was there, there just more chances that, that we weren't getting them through? Did we have a lot of bull calves? So these are more questions that we need to ask before we can make an analysis of, yes, we have a problem. So the, this graph underneath is the same information that we see in the grid. So when we run the guide report, it, it defaults to the grid. If on the bottom of the dairy comp screen, we click on the graph, we can see the, the graph that we have displayed here. And just the same information, some people see better in a graph view. So in June, we had 194 fresh, 16 had metritis, 8% metritis rate and our confidence interval was six to 10%. So once we look at this, more questions to go back, do a little more digging before we start making assumptions about the herd. So if we hop back into guide, just another, another example here. If you ever get stuck in dairy comp, the escape button, it's not very clear when you're, you're in guide how to get out of there. So escape will get you back. And looking at the DOAs. So I think that something like this can help us when we start looking at our metritis rates. So this is for defaults to the last year. So we're looking at the DO rates by lactation group. Up in the upper right-hand corner of most of these reports, there's an options box. And that lets us change date ranges. We can change lactation groups if it's something that we're, we're looking at all lactations mixed together. So something like this, we could go in and change our range and just look at the December and see, did we have something did we have more first lactation animals calving in? Did we have more dead calves? Did we have an issue on our calving pack that contributed to our metritis rates or was it nutritionally based or did something change there? So this is start helping us answer some of the questions that we got in our first, first graph. So just a really good dairy comp reminder, always look for the option boxes, legends, axis markers, and that can help us take a standard report and change it just a little bit to help us through the problem that we're trying to solve. So uh, take time on those days when, when the weather's not so nice out here coming up in, in the Northeast and, and works through some of the guide reports. Uh, you can add them to user, so you can find them a little bit easier if you need to by right clicking on them. And uh, just a lot of information across your entire herd and your young stock if, if you're looking for, for analysis reports. So you might notice that when you're in guide, a lot of those reports are stemming from eGraph. So if we go back out to the command line and type eGraph, we get this screen here. And if we clicked on the option box in some of those guide reports, we'd get to the same screen. And what this lets us do is customize those reports 
Uh, we can also run eGraph with a for statement if needed. So if we were talking about a multi-site setup, there's ways that we can start doing analysis to, to really zero in on one of our single sites. So we get to pick the event. <clears throat> we get to pick the date range, what lactation groups we're looking at. And then we get to control the X axis and the legend. So in the next example here, we just were looking at mastitis by date and event number. So are we having a fresh cow transition mastitis issue? So looking at this, we can see we, we did have more mastitis just recently, but we can't really tell if this was impactful on, on our fresh cows, right? Was the spike due to fresh cows or was this just something that had happened? So um, not on this screenshot, it was a little bit up further up in the upper right-hand corner, we'd see on eGraph, there's the option box, and that would take us back to this pick list. And we would wanna um, change our X axis from event date to our day in milk. So we're just gonna switch from event date to day in milk. And now we can start seeing that there's a lot more mastitis in that first uh, seven days. So each bar, the, one of the options in the e-graph setup was how, how many days are represented in the width of, a, of the bar and we're set at seven days. So in the first seven days, we had 66 counts of mastitis. And again, I think this isn't really telling us, do we have a fresh cow mastitis issue? possible that it happened during dry cow? Um, you know, is it something we're, we're doing pre-dry or during the dry? So I, th I think again, more questions to go out and start finding, finding out before we can make, make an assumption about the herd. You know, how are we detecting the mastitis during fresh? Are we doing a CMT? Did, um, are we treating from cultures? Is it really a transition issue or is it just a, a data entry issue? So I think going back again and changing the date range here, is this something that happens? So we change our start and end date. Is this an old problem? Was this something that happened six months ago or is this happening currently? And we can find that out by changing the date ranges and rerunning the report. So always thinking about what other questions do we need to ask before we can start doing our analysis and, and forming conclusions and making management decisions. So um, just for the sake of time, we're not gonna go through the other reports, the econ or events report. So econ, uh, just simply typing econ on the command line, you can, it also supports a for statement. So econ for lack greater than zero, we can get our um, dead cow analysis. So why are animals leaving the herd that, with the car codes? Um, and we can also do that for heifers if we needed. And then the events, when we run just straight events on the command line, we get a pick list and we can say events by day and milk, events by, by month and start seeing what other fresh cow incidents are happening. So cow care is the last piece here today. Uh, so newer module within dairy comp, it does need some more setup on protocols. So we do need to go through all our protocols again and just add the cow care piece on there and assign drugs to them and how many days they're on the drugs, that sort of thing. One time setup, but I, I think that we'll see more people using cow care and more requirements for it as, as different rules come down through. But it increases the visibility between the vets and the management team. It can help with your VCPR um, requirements, reminders on that permanent record on all your animals. So if you enter a treatment on one, it will go into cow care, it'll be there. We can start looking at protocols by, a, for a cow, we can see an, an, all the drug usage, usage for an individual cow for her life. Um, we can start seeing how many times we use a certain protocol. So we can do some of this with eGraph. This is gonna pull us to the next level of understanding our drug usage. We can also manage our inventory here if we wanted an optional piece. Um, so I, I think as we're starting to do analysis and start saying we're seeing limited drugs, we're, we're needing to be a bit, bit more controlled. Are we doing okay with our inventory and our usage? Does that, that match up? The other piece that we can get out of here is the 
up-to-date drug labels. So we can actually go in, view all of the labels. So make sure we're in compliance with, with withholds, days on drugs, uh, administration routes, that sort of thing. So um, newer piece, and we can help you get some setup on that if you'd like. So really hard with a, a big group here. I, I'm betting some of you are wishing we'd gone a little bit more in depth into some of the topics. And I'm betting some people said that was, we have had a lot of new users here in the last few years and, and we've, we've covered a lot and might be some quite a few new topics for you. So support is included in your Dairy Comp and Dairy Comp Analyzer subscriptions. So call in, um, email support at dairy1.com. There's the phone number. You can scan this box with your phone for the QR code and it'll download the support app. Um, you can also go out to the iStore or Play Store. So there's a team of us here that can help you. So it's a very individualized piece as well, looking at your records. So uh, I'd like to encourage farms to call in or email in, use the app, set up an appointment with us. If you have records that you wanna go over, or you need to take that next step, or you need some help understanding a graph on your farm, let us know, set up a time. We'll make appointments with you. Um, always call, you can, you can get us during the day too, and, and we can help you on the fly. But if you had a time where you know you were gonna be wanting to sit down at the computer, or you're gonna have your vet or your herdsman with you, um, set up a time with us. We, with the phone and team viewer, it's almost as good as us sitting next to you and we can help you go over any questions that you have, um, do individualized training, that sort of thing. So uh, thank you for your time today and happy to answer, answer any questions that you guys have. Thanks.